Let's talk about getting you famous. When the market gets tough, the consumer will trust the agent of choice, the knowledge broker, the agent with the best track record, who's the most credible, who's the most relatable, who's the most recognizable in the community. They're gonna work with the agent of choice, no doubt. So here's the question. How recognizable is your agent brand, is your team brand in your local community? And here's the next question. What are your fame assets? You heard me correct. That's what we're going to talk about today. Your fame assets. In other words, when you look across your marketing mix, what are the pieces and components of your marketing that are utilized to establish influence, massive influence and thought leadership in your local community so that you become the agent of choice? So that when anybody is in the market to think about buying, selling, investing, referring, you are the no brainer, one and only agent of choice. What are your fame assets? It could be something like your email list. It could be billboards. It could be postcards. It could be videos video and social media. And today's conversation is about what are those different assets for building fame, for building influence that can be cultivated and leveraged to help you establish the most recognizable agent brand in your community. Welcome to This Week in Marketing. My name is Jason Pantana, your instructor, and I am pumped for this conversation, not because I think you need to be famous, but because I know you need to build your influence. We live in an era of influence, and if your marketing is not establishing that kind of thought leadership and that kind of consideration, then your marketing is failing to hit its mark. So today's conversation is all about your fame assets, and I'm being provocative and silly with those words, but I think you get where I'm going with this. So welcome to the show. If you're new to the channel, make sure to tap that big red subscribe button, and also there's a bell icon right next to it. If you hit that, you can turn on notifications. So whenever we publish new videos just like this one, you are the first to know and therefore the first to act upon the ideas herein and reap all the rewards. So without further ado, let's talk about getting you famous. Now, real quick, why am I talking about getting you famous? Well, because fame or being recognized or having influence attracts opportunities. Could be ventures, could be partnerships, could be referrals, could be any number of things. So the first thing to think about is, wow, we live in an era of attention. Is your marketing garnering attention for you, your brand? Whether that brand is a team or individual, are you earning attention through your marketing, attention for what? Well, attention for your thought leadership, whatever that looks like in your specific respective brand, is your marketing achieving that for you? Because again, it's an era of influence. When I look across my own coaching clients, for instance, I coach a lot of folks who have a lot of influence, not necessarily on a national or macro level, but in a micro local level, they're the most known in their community. Because of that, opportunities just come their way. So there's this principle of routing influence. Routing it by way of what if commercial deals come your way? What if referrals come your way? What if partnerships and ventures come your way? When you have an audience, you can do a lot of stuff with it. You've got to own the distribution. What do I mean by that? You have to have the audience. You gotta have, like, think about it like this. You can have all these different startup companies and they're always trying to partner with somebody who has what? An audience. Why? So they can sell their product or service to that audience. Whoever has the audience makes all the money because they're like, yeah, I'll partner up with you for a revenue share or something along those lines. It's all about having the audience. I remember back in the day, I was a wannabe musician with practically no success whatsoever. However, I was in this meeting with a very established entertainment manager and he was speaking of this band that had once been this huge, sensational, all over the radio, top 40 kind of band and their time had passed and they were no longer necessarily top 40. They were kind of, I dare say has been, but this manager said, but it doesn't matter because they had an email list of hundreds of thousands of people who had subscribed to their email over the years. And he said, so all they have to do whenever they cut a new album is email their list and boom, just like that, without a record label, without anybody else's help, they're gonna go gold. And the reason for it is because they have the audience own the distribution. So what are your fame assets? From a marketing standpoint, are you positioning your brand? Because believe it or not, even if you're a real estate agent, you have one. It's you, but you have one. Are you earning influence? And what are your fame assets? Hey, if all this talk about social media and email marketing, for example, has you excited to build your platform, but you're kind of scratching your head and not sure how to approach the subjects, make sure to check out our Marketing Pro courses. We have courses in their design to help you level up your email marketing, your social media marketing. The courses are each about three hours of recorded content. It's video instructional content with me, walking you through step-by-step -step exactly how to set up your profiles, what content to create, how to do email campaigns, what emails to send. It's all the steps and more on demand you can watch the videos as many times as you want. So click the link in the description to learn more about Marketing Pro.
So again, here's the dilemma. It's push versus pull. Push is, it's, I'm all for it. It's prospecting, it's outbound, it's going after the business. It's getting leads and following up, following up, following up. That is part of it. And you cannot escape that part of it. And I would never condone avoiding that. But there's the other side of it, the pull, the come here, the attraction marketing. What is your marketing mix to attract business? And not just business, because that's putting the car before the horse. We're not really attracting business immediately when it comes to branding. What you're really attracting is influence, credibility, trustworthiness, relatability, positioning yourself to earn and win that business when the time arises to buy, sell, invest, or refer. It's the difference between push versus pull. And behind all of that is this notion of trust. I've said it time and again on this show, this is a know you, like you, trust you business, a relationship business, it always has been, but not trust you in a personal sense only. We talked about this before on the show. There's a sense of personal trust where it's like, oh, I, I trust you to watch my dog. Unless you're running a dog watching business, that's personal trust, but it's about professional trust. I know you like you, trust you professionally to get the job done, your job, to buy the house, to sell the house. For example, Nielsen does a study from time to time called Trust in Advertising, where they analyze the importance and role of trust, generating and eliciting signals of trust through advertising. And interestingly, in their most recent study, they found that Gen Z and millennials place more trust in advertising than any other generation ever, which to me is unsurprising because you got to think about the channels through which advertising happens. We are exposed to content through social media and digital channels more than anything else right now. And so it's like, it's unsurprising that these younger generations that are more integrated into these channels are going to also look for, how can I trust this brand? It's all about influence. It's all about fame, if you will. Now, also in this report, what I found interesting was that 88% of respondents to the whole report, they still put the most confidence and most trust in personal word of mouth recommendations. And think about that through the lens of trust. What does it take to refer somebody? Like if a consumer puts their good name on the line to refer you to somebody else, to their father-in-law or whatever, or whoever it might be. If they put their good name on the line to say, you should work with this person, they're the best, they're vouching for you, they've gotta have a high level of certainty and confidence that you're up for the job. And so if you aren't widely trusted and credible and on the consideration set of a lot of other consumers, that's gonna to be tougher and tougher to do. It's all about trust, eliciting trust. It's not really about fame. It's really about having a platform of thought leadership whereby you can cultivate that sense of, I know you, I like you, I trust you. And speaking of Gen Z and millennials and the role and prevalence of social media marketing in terms of influencing younger generations and all generations, the CEO of Instagram, Adam Mazzari, he did a TED talk not too long ago. It was also a video he published on Instagram where he made a pretty profound statement where he said, we're seeing a power shift from institutions to individuals. Now, I don't wanna get into all the nuance and philosophy of that, but I think when you look at well, who do you follow on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok, on YouTube? You typically follow people. Well, who do you work with in the realm of real estate? You typically hire an agent. The idea of the individual versus the institution, this is an open lane of opportunity for you to build your personal brand, a brand that garners credibility, relatability, and puts you on the consideration set of consumers in your marketplace because it is about the individual. People do business with people. And so when you look at the opportunity to build that influence around you, and this is maybe a little abstract, maybe a high level, I'm just like, man, there's a massive opportunity right now to build your brand, to build some influence, to attract consideration, but also to have an audience because you gotta to to own the distribution. You wanna have that influence so that people know you like you trust you, so when the time comes to buy, sell, invest, or refer, you're the no-brainer agent of choice. I hope that part made sense for you. So here's a question for you to ponder about. What do you sell? If you're in real estate, what do you sell? I ask that question all the time and I generally get two responses. The most common response I hear is, oh, I sell real estate. And I play with the audience and I go, wrong. Actually, you help people who wanna own real estate, buy it, or who own real estate, sell it. But you're the in-between, you're the transactional broker, so to speak. And I'm just debating words and you know splitting hairs, but they get the point. The second most common answer I hear is I sell myself, to which I typically respond and say that's very unspecific. It could mean a lot of different things. It was Tim Ferriss who said that life rewards the specific ask and punishes the vague request. And so when you say you sell yourself, what does that even mean, really? Here's the answer. I think most aptly describes what you sell. And you can flip the question and not ask, what do I sell? But instead ask, what is it somebody's buying from me? When they hire my services, what are they buying from, from me? And the answer is your expertise, your real estate expertise, and the way in which you convey that expertise. Again, this is about 
individual influence. So what are your fame assets? How are you building that level of credibility and trust all the time? And again, it's this push versus pull. It's easy for folks to say, no, I just want to work the leads. But I'm like, well, you don't know exactly when somebody's in that moment of decision to buy, sell, invest, or refer. And so if you don't really know, the best way to be positioned to earn the business is to be everywhere and to dominate at the top of the food chain, the most recognizable agent in your marketplace, where when the time comes, you've already earned the consideration of that consumer to come to you with whatever they're looking to do. You sell your expertise and the way in which you convey that expertise. And you look across the landscape of video and social and postcards and content, it's a wide open lane of opportunity right now for you to build your brand. And let me be specific. I don't just mean like get famous everywhere. That's not my intention. I mean like locally, your brand under the dome of your local marketplace. What would happen to your business if you were the most recognizable agent in your community? And not in a negative way, in a way of, you gotta talk to so-and-so, they make the best videos, they send the best emails, they're the most knowledgeable. Recognizing what you indeed sell as your expertise. And if your brand was then predicated on that idea of conveying expertise, what would happen if you were the most recognizable and therefore the highest regarded agent or team in your local community? I can tell you what would happen. You would be the first contender for all the listings, all the buyers, all the referrals, because you would have established yourself as the most worthy of hire, i.e. the most trustworthy. So in terms of your fame asset, and again, I'm using the term provocatively, it's not really about fame, it's about influence. And influence means leadership, thought leadership, especially in the context of you sell your expertise. And people are working with you because of your expertise. So what's gonna be the mechanism for conveying that expertise, your message to the masses in your local marketplace to establish your primacy at the top of that food chain from all the other agents, all the other teams, what will you be known for? And I'm asking that question through the lens of, is it email, is it video, is it postcards? What's the medium to carry that message for you? We know what the message is, it's your expertise, it's your influence, it's your leadership, that's what it is. What's gonna be the medium that you're like, I'm gonna do this, and that's what I'm gonna be known for, it's billboards, it's this, in my local marketplace. Fame or influence is especially powerful. You gotta own the distribution, own the audience, so to speak. I'm thinking about celebrities like The Rock, like Ryan Reynolds, like Roger Federer, who yes, they were famous and they made millions off of movies, but they used their influence to invest in companies, buy companies, become spokespeople for large companies, get revenue share. They solicited opportunities because of their influence. It's about having the audience because from that audience, opportunities will be presented to you. So what are you gonna be known for? Is it gonna be social media? I'm thinking about rock stars in our ecosystem like Glenda Baker, who's crushing it on TikTok, or Ken Pozak, who's absolutely dominating on YouTube right now, or Instagram with Shannon Manjin or Katie Day. There are so many rock stars in our community who have established absolute powerhouse brands on social that are really predicated on their expertise, their influence, their thought leadership, and they're building businesses based upon being known for something on Instagram, on TikTok. We have members in our coaching ecosystem who are crushing it with Facebook groups where they establish community in their local marketplace and it cultivates trust and it wins business. What are your fame magnets? Now, one note of commentary on social media. Social media is not always geographically concerned. It is a factor, but it's really about interest. And so you might find on social media that most of the people who are actually watching your videos, for instance, live in faraway places and they don't live locally. So a word of advice would be if you're making content on social, I would also be paying to promote that content whereby it is targeted locally so you can establish your brand under the dome in your local marketplace and let that content go to work for you establishing your influence locally. Or maybe your fame asset is the email list. I used the example of the band before. It doesn't matter if they're a has-been band because they got a hundreds of thousands of persons email list and they're gonna let them all know about their newest record and this was back in the day where they were selling albums. I know that that's a dated comment and this, but it doesn't matter because they went gold every single time. And the power of an email list works in real estate too. Matt Curtis runs the number one team in the state of Alabama, sends three emails a week to a 55,000 person plus email list. We've done an entire show dedicated to his email strategy and it is a fame asset. It allows him to have an influence over a large group of people and that brings a lot of opportunities. It pulls in a lot of opportunities for his business. Another option could be billboards. Now those could be cost prohibitive, but they're very influential. I'm thinking about Nadine Blakely. She's in Lynchburg, Virginia, and she is all over 
everywhere. Everybody sees Nadine everywhere. She's got billboards. She has wrapped moving trucks. You see her face everywhere and it establishes her brand under the dome of that local marketplace. In the Queens market, Maureen Follin crushes it with postcards. Again, it doesn't have to just be video. There are so many different channels or mediums from a marketing standpoint that can be utilized to carry your message. And that message is, of course, your expertise. What do you sell? your expertise in real estate and the way in which you convey it. By the way in which you convey it, that could be through email, it could be through video, it could be through postcards, it could be through billboards, or it could be through broadcast channels like maybe TV or radio. We have clients who are crushing it with Hulu ads, or it could be through broadcast channels like TV and radio. So for example, we have coaching clients like David Caldwell, who runs YouTube skippable in-stream ads, i.e. YouTube commercials, targeting every homeowner in the city in which he lives over and over and over again. It's his brand everywhere through YouTube ads and they're incredibly cost effective. The Far Group Northwest runs Hulu ads and demand side Amazon Prime ads because believe it or not, you can actually run skippable in-stream ads, not just on YouTube, but on Hulu, on Amazon. There's a lot of opportunities to establish your brand everywhere, your fame in the context of your local community, your influence. Jay Pitts, Tom Toole, Byron Lazine, they've all coordinated their podcast with local radio, whereby their actual podcasts are radio shows in their local marketplace, establishing their thought leadership. Chris Weaver runs awesome radio ads all the time. His brand is recognizable, it's everywhere, and it attracts business because he's top of mind, he's recognizable, he's relatable. All these people are those things, and they're attracting business, push versus pull. And there's even the use and power of events. Dave Archuleta, for example, we've done an entire podcast interview with Dave on this show before. He runs a weekly softball league in his entire community, and he puts on other types of events, uh, wine events, uh, different things locally, and he's become absolutely mega famous through that and also even through his open houses. My point to you is, my question for you today is what are your fame assets? What are you doing in your marketing that is designed to attract business your way based upon demonstrating your expertise and therefore your worthiness to be hired and considered? In real estate, uh, there's often a sense of delayed gratification where I just wanna know where the next deal's coming from. Where's the lead who wants to buy today or really quickly or sell immediately? And so we tend to have a focus of, it's gotta be bottom of funnel or bust because I need people who are in market to make a move right now, but that's fine. However, you have to recognize that this is a business predicated on know you, like you, trust you, and trust takes time. And so if you're not investing in your brand, in your influence, in establishing yourself as the agent of choice in your community so that when the time arises for someone to buy, sell, invest, or refer, and you've positioned yourself as the no-brainer choice, then you're missing a massive opportunity. I smell a massive opportunity for you to double down on your brand. So tell me in the comments, what's gonna be the fame asset that you invest in starting now going forward? Is it gonna be email, social, video? Is it gonna be billboards or postcards or events? Because again, this is a relationship business, a know you, like you, trust you business. Are you leveraging your marketing to establish your fame, your influence, whatever word you wanna to use to establish your brand under the dome of your marketplace, are you building a brand so that when the time arises for someone to buy, sell, invest, or refer, it's you and nobody else? Seriously, I wanna hear your thoughts about this topic in the comments, so let me know, and thank you for watching. Until next week, this is This Week in Marketing.